glad you're here. And you don't need to hear from me. We need to hear from our king, not the king. <laughs> our king. That's right. I'm going to correct you. Night, and um, I'm comfortable and I feel welcome in your midst because I bring you good tidings from your motherland. Yes, your motherland where you all left. I'd like to share a couple of things with you. First of all, let me introduce myself. I am Oba. Oba means King Dr. Michael Odunayo Ajayi. Odunayo means I was born during Easter, so this is a special season for me, and I'm a Jai. I, I would say I'm the youngest and most educated king to have ascended the throne of wow. my forefathers since the 1100 AD, when wow. we started having kings. Wow. Um, I've, I've had a long career with the multinationals, I've worked in several corporations, now I'm now king. There's nothing else to aspire to than to do the will of God. <laughs> and uh, as king, I recognize the fact that uh, what I've been asked to do is beyond what I can do in the physical, because I know and recognize that there's a king of kings. And so I'm here representing the king of kings, which is God Almighty. And I believe that the will of God Almighty is that our people must prosper. I want to uh, inform you that uh, the greatest gifts of life was given to us in Africa. The best in human resources are in Africa. The best in natural resources are in Africa. If you were to remember the gifts that Jesus Christ was given during his birth, gold, frankincense, and so on, they are all from Africa. Yes. The, the world's largest uh, deposit of uranium is in Africa. Diamond, gold, and everything, crude oil, is in Africa. The human race actually started from Africa. Civilization started from Africa. Yes. Why should we blacks then be backward? So, why not complaining so much about uh, what we've been through? Because yes, we've been enslaved. We now, we are at the stage where we are suffering from the effect of the enslavement and we keep ourselves in perpetual enslavement. If you understand what I mean. Yes. You could be enslaved, but we need to get ourselves from that perpetual enslavement. In other words, we have to develop that self-confidence to be able to reach out to our goals. If you sit down and do nothing, or we are complacent, things will continue to happen, and we will sit back and be complaining. I was telling my friend that you've got the best president ever because you all sat down and wanted it that way. Maybe you could have done more. I hope you get my analogy. Presently, you have the best president ever because you didn't do much about getting your own kind of president. Do you get the point? Yes. You've done a little, you've done so much, but there's so much more you could have done. But as long as we remain alive, there is a lot that we can still do. Nothing good comes easy. If we sit down and continue to look at the system, of course, the, the controllers of the, of the world will continue to take advantage. No capitalist wants to give any inch to anybody, surely. You want to get an inch, you need to fight for your inch. You don't fight for an inch, they take a yard. You don't fight for a yard, they continue to take more. You understand what I'm saying? And so I urge you all to understand the, the trivials of our forefathers who had to be brought from their own motherland, taken through the ocean. There was no steam engine at that time. So imagine how many years, how many months they spent on the ocean, how many of them were thrown overboard and then brought into this land. We are now at the stage where I relate you to the Bible. What does the Bible tell us? It says, go ye to the world and have dominion. Wherever you find yourself is where you have to have dominion. Yes. And having dominion doesn't mean you're going to sit back and be controlled. You need to take charge. Right. Which is why when uh, Charles said we have to come here, I said, yes, I would like to spend some little time with you because I want to reassure you that, first of all, you are not slaves. Secondly, you are children of royals. And you need to assume, yeah, very important. We are the ones you left behind. And so I'm here to let you see 
these are the people you have left behind, and you are children of royals, and you need to assume your position. We are in a stage where we find ourselves like Joseph, who was sold into slavery in the Bible, and Joseph went from slavery into the prison. From the prison, Joseph became prime minister. Are you going to sit back and not assume? You already have the anointing of Joseph, but Joseph's anointing is not going to come like that. If you do not do anything, nothing is going to come. Even in the business world, if you take no action, no risk, you end up in the same location. So you need to, you know, you've got good leadership. You've got lots of good examples. I mean, Reverend Martin Luther King and Co. have done so much. And God has given us an eye opener. We have had a president in this country for eight years who you all wanted against all odds. There's nothing that is beyond your reach. Whatever the human mind can conceive, it's possible to achieve. Today, I heard something about the blood that unites us is stronger than the waters that divide us. So I, I, I want you to imagine the fact that uh, you are not just here on your own. We are here with you. We are always here with you in prayers, spiritually and otherwise. Your brothers are in the Caribbean. Your brothers are in Brazil, in Cuba, virtually in all parts of the world. Yes. But till you take dominion, it looks like we are still struggling, and you have to take dominion. There's something in Nigeria that we call, I'm from the Yoruba tribe in Nigeria. Uh -huh. Yoruba tribe is about 60 million in Nigeria. It's one of the major ethnic groups. But all over the world, we are over 400 million people. Wow. Yes. Because some of you here may be Yorubas. You need to trace your ancestry. You need to know where you come from. Uh -huh. If you do not know where you are coming from, how do you find your way to where you are going? <laughs> and I was asking Charles, I said, do they teach you history in school? He said, yes, they teach the local American history. But that's not your history. Right. That is the history written for you. So you have to begin to learn your own actual real history to know where you are coming from, to know the strength in your color, to know the strength that you have in your heart. And then that will assist you to propel yourself into the next uh, point and then be able to aid the next generation. Yes. We need to look at our youths. Yes. Anything we are doing, no matter how much we struggle, we need to carry the youth along. We need to assist them to understand that uh, all these life size of drugs and all violence and so on is not going to help. Black on black violence has to stop. Mm -hmm. You have to stop killing each other. Mm -hmm. our, Yes. I, I was talking about uh, the business world. I said, look, why is it that Jews, in spite of all they've been through, the Holocaust and everything, are today one of the richest groups in America? Because they are each other's brother's keepers. Money passes around within the Jewish community a minimum of 18 times before it goes outside the community. I want to ask you the question. When you have something to do, do you do it or buy it from your fellow brothers? Or do you ignore them and then spend your money elsewhere? Yeah. How are you going to grow business? So you need to begin to look at that. That's how you can grow the community. And then you need to stop sitting back and saying, well, I'm not a politician. If you are not a politician and you don't show interest in anything, it means that you shouldn't complain when you have some idiots ruling over you. You have to take charge. If you do not wish, you, you understand, it's important that you, you yourself are a part of the change that you desire. That's right. If you take no action, no good will come our way. And I think that uh, we are well equipped and strong enough. I have no doubt about the fact that uh, before I came here, I was in the UK, and uh, we visited the British Museum. We saw a lot of African artifacts stolen, taken away against our wish, that are displayed all over the museum. Some of them were displayed two, three floors beneath the ground floor in big vaults. The doors are this big. The question then is that if these things are not so important, why are they in that place? It's because they are very important. It's because there's something about Africa that we've really not looked at. And in everything that we do, we want to be fair to all our fellow human beings. We, be, we want to be able to take care of everybody's needs. We want to understand what we need to do to progress in life. And I urge you that you work hand in hand and support one another because we look up to having the best in quality life that we deserve. It is high time that uh, we take our place of prominence in the world affairs. It's no longer time for us to keep complaining about being marginalized. This is the biggest error. 
people suffer because they developed undue inferiority complex. Nobody is inferior to the other. Right. The, yes. No one person is inferior to the other. <clears throat> I, I noticed something too. They give us pictures of people. You see pictures of, how do we know whether Jesus was black or yellow or red? It is the picture that we see. But that doesn't matter. You have a direct connection to God Almighty. And God is so easy to reach that. Even as you are sitting down, you could be talking to God. And God knows your need. And God has equipped you with every, every, every need that you have. You have two legs, like every other person, two hands, and you can do a lot. There's nothing that you desire in your heart that you cannot do. So I will urge you, and I pray for you, because the best I can do is to talk to you, to urge you to ensure there's unity, support your leaders. Very, very important. It's common for us in Africa, even in Africa, for us to backbite our leaders, for us to keep talking about our leaders rather than support them. You always want to find the fault. Nobody wants to do anything, but when somebody is doing it, you want to find fault. Please support your leader. You can make mistakes sometimes, but eventually you will get to your goal. And that's the way forward. And I want you to be assured that we, your brothers, the ones that you have left back in Africa, are right behind you. We are behind you in prayer spiritually because we feel incomplete. Incomplete till we find the missing piece. We are your missing piece and you are our own missing piece. So we need to come together. You see the color of my body? I don't think it's different from yours. I see this is our chief. I, I don't know whether you are from Ghana, but I see a lot of... <laughs> eh? Are you from Ghana or something? Yeah, I see a lot of... So you see, the African culture is very... <laughs> if, if I was to see him in Africa, I would place him on a serious fine for wearing, for wearing beads, you know? But I'm happy because it's a way of projecting the African culture. Yeah, right. But the human race is all one. Yes. If you... If you yeah. If, if you look at the human race from the position of the Bible, God created Adam, right? And out of Adam, Eve was created. It means that for the world to have multiplied to 7 billion people, everybody came from Adam and Eve. So we are all relatives. We need to understand that. God did not, you know, it's not about strength or power. God, we always say something in Yoruba land, that if God makes you bald-headed, like you have no hair, he will give you beards. Do you understand? If you are abroad, you would, you would have beards. So in other words, what you lose in the corner, you will gain, gain in the roundabout. There's always some benefit. Uh -huh. if, you, if your parents are very poor, they can't really send you to school, you probably turn out to be a very talented student and you can win scholarship. There's always something. But do we see the opportunities when they knock? Right. The opportunities are always there. That I'm here today is an opportunity. Yes. That you choose to listen to me is an opportunity. Yes. Tomorrow, I won't be here with you, but you hope, hopefully will remember all that I've discussed is an opportunity. In another five years, ten years, I want to come back and see that there's a lot of improvement. Things have changed. It's not just about talking. It's about action, real action. You have to demand for your right. So without taking too much of your time, first of all, let me thank you for the opportunity to be here with, with you. And let me thank... Uh, uh, chairman, I don't know whether that's how you call the position, for, for giving me the audience. And of course, my chief host, Charles Hall, and we've been talking a lot. And uh, this is beyond, it is the will of God. What, whatever a man does is always the will of God. That I'm here today is the will of God. I feel confident that wherever the soul of your foot can touch, there you can conquer, you can take it over. You are not, no, nobody should operate anywhere and feel like I'm a second class citizen. No. I stand up and I talk to anybody confidently. I'm not a second class citizen anywhere. I'm a citizen of the world. You understand? So please see yourself as a citizen of the world. Once you understand that, you know that you are in charge of your situation. Let me pray for you. I don't, some of you don't believe in prayers. True of us. True. Okay. All right. For those of them who believe in prayers, I pray for you that whatever it is that is your heart desire for your own progress, for the progress of your community, the Lord Almighty will fulfill it for you. Amen. 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 Or if you want to say it in Yoruba, you say Ashe. Ashe. Okay, the Ashe is what our traditional forefathers say. Yes. Ashe is a stronger way of saying Amen. The, the people who brought Christianity only translated Ashe to Amen. Ashe, when you say Ashe, it's like a definite, yes. this must happen. Yes. And so I pray that. God will visit all these various communities and put an end to all this violence. 
a share. But if God is going to act, you have to take the step first. In Yoruba land, we say, Omotobashikpa, yeah, What does that mean? If a little baby wants the mother to carry him or her, she has to lift up her arms. If you don't, you do like this, the mother won't know you want me to carry. So you need to take a step, a, a little action for God to be able to carry on the rest. I wish you well, and I pray that uh, whatever your objectives are, you will progress in them. And we will have cause to be joyful and be happy as we look forward. It is well with you. There's nothing to worry about, really. I, I see somebody with a black beret, and I remember when I was in the university, I was, I was always wearing black beret for some time. And, and then everybody said, no, 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 but you are a prince. You shouldn't be doing it. I said, no, this is not about being a prince. So when there's an issue, I want to lead the students out. And then I tell you one incident that happened one day. We, we had this big issue to fight with the government, with the ruling body in the school. And then I led all my people, let's go out, we're going out. And then they called the police. The police was looking at us right there. Go back. They threw the tear gas. We didn't mind. We are young students. I was 17 years old huh. so in the university. So <laughs> meanwhile, a friend of mine was in the hostel. And I said, look, join the student movement. My friend said, no, he doesn't believe in all this. He's going to sit back. He doesn't believe in my, in my struggle, in the activism. So he sat back in the room. And then the police wanted to shoot. They were getting worried. They kept pointing the gun. But they couldn't shoot at all. So they turned the gun up and they shot up in the air. Uh -huh. Do you know what happened? The stray bullet went and killed the boy who was sitting in the room and didn't join us. Wow. So you have to pray to be at the right place at the right time. <laughs> God bless you all. Can you take a couple of questions? Yes, why not? Yes. But, but let me ask the first question. Okay. Tell us how you became a king, okay. and tell us about your kingdom. Okay. okay. All right. Um, like I told you, I'm Yoruba from Nigeria. I call Nigeria because these countries were made by the colonial masters. Those yes. countries yes. never existed. Yes. We were all one in Africa. Yes. But when it was time, they decided to balkanize Africa. So the French took some, the English took some, everybody took a share. But I'm Yoruba from the Yoruba tribe. And uh, my great-grandfather, my great-great, I mean, it's not just the great-great-grandfather, were the ones who discovered the land in which I am. That's Erimo Kingdom. And then was the first king in 1100 AD. Wow. And so from that point, the, the royal institution was established among four brothers. Yeah. And so when one is king from this side, the next time there's a vacancy, it moves to the next one, and just yeah. like that. And that's the system in all parts of Africa. Yeah. And so... When, before I became king, when there was a vacancy, there were 46 people who were princes who were qualified to be king. And then they, they said they had prayed. There was a selection. They looked at my dozier. They, you know, the education was very important. They wanted somebody who could fight for the community, somebody who knew what he was doing. And that's why my focus is essentially youth development, women empowerment, and so on. Because I realized that once we empower women, they can take care of the family. Very important. You don't leave the women behind. So uh, in three years ago, in 2014, I was nominated as king and I was coronated. As part of the coronation, there is a big aspect of it where you are taken into the wilderness, so to say, mm -hmm. and left alone for seven days. No food, no water, no nothing, no human being to commune with. In that place is an opportunity for you to achieve self-discipline. Uh, That's the idea. Because... It's also important for you. You cannot succeed in any struggle without self-discipline. There will be times you have to probably walk barefooted. There will be times you have to go around without food. Money is not enough. You must be disciplined. Because if everything was just there at your disposal, of course, nobody will bother again. So we, we went, I went through all that. And then, of course, there are so many other aspects of it. It's, it's a three-week uh, program in which I was installed and uh, coronated as the king in July 2014. Michael, you had your hand up. Yes, um, I have a nephew who went to St. Benedict's, and he was first generation born here from Nigeria. His father was from Nigeria. He's now um, on the stock exchange in Nigeria. And I talked to him, and he said he was very uh, embarrassed because he didn't. He deals with um, the Nigerian banks and the Chinese banks. And he said, but he, I asked him, well, what do you think black Americans can do in this country? And he was saying that 
there's no like lobbyists, real strong lobbyist organization in the United States to deal to help Nigeria and Ghana and those countries. What do you think about that? No, say that again. There was no uh, lobbyist, black American lobbyist organization in the United States to push for more African development by for African development. Okay. And my, my, my opinion about that is that this is our own assignments, really. You understand? I am an apostle of Africans investing in Africa and in Africans, which is why I mentioned to you the nature of the business of the Jews. We need to support each other. Everybody needs to support one another. I, I realize that when you keep a task and you are waiting for somebody to lobby or to help you present it, it's not going to achieve anything. If the person assists you, he's probably doing so for his own ulterior motive. So you need to, you need to, you need to carry your own vision. When my grandfather was king, he had his own vision. I'm king now. I'm not going with his own vision. I'm using his legacy, but I have my own vision for my people. And then I go with my own vision because only you who has the vision is able to follow it through to the end. So I guess everything is still back to us. It's back to you and I. That's, that's what we are supposed to do. Where are you from, first of all? <laughs> Originally. Well, <laughs> <laughs> my ancestors come from Africa. My first home okay. actually was uh, in North Carolina. Okay. <laughs> but I mainly just want to thank you for coming, uh, Your Majesty, and also like to remind us that <clears throat> the Yoruba culture has been the most enduring of all of the African culture that has survived in the Western Hemisphere. I've seen elements of in Brazil, in Cuba, Puerto Rico, That's right. you know, Venezuela. That's right. But the Yoruba influence has been so profound. And so we owe a lot, you know, to the Yoruba people. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yes, yes. And by the way, I was able to meet your first brother, and y'all called him Zeke. Okay, over there. Zikiwe. Yeah, that's right. It's one of the few And a few others, yes, yes, yeah. yes, yeah, yes, yes. Zik was one of those who fought for the independence in Nigeria. Yes, and yes. And they were in their mid 30s. They were 30 in their mid 30s. Yes. So it's not really about age. You could be 30, you could be 50, you could be 90. There is no time you cannot seek for your freedom. Yeah, and there, right. there, there, there's a, there's, there are different ways people can be imprisoned. It's not just when you are taken into the physical prison. If your mind is imprisoned, that's the biggest and most dangerous one. How large is the area that you are considered to be king of, and how many people? Well, uh, maybe about 140,000 people, 100. lots of minors, but could be more than that because a lot of them do not live within the community, you know, like they're moving, coming over the weekend, or, you know, they work in the urban areas, yes. But Yoruba land is quite vast. Yoruba yes, land is like yes, a, yes. about a fifth, almost 45 percent of the size of Nigeria, mm -hmm. and Nigeria is the largest black country in the world. Mm -hmm. So wow. one out of every five black people you see in the world yes, is a Nigerian. Yes, wow. Yes. Yes, yes. One out of every five people you see anywhere in the world is a Nigerian, That's right. and it's the largest black country. Right. It's the biggest economy yes. in Africa too, 170 million people. You know, so it's quite uh, yes. large. But we, we, the Yoruba, speak the same language, the 60 million people, and a lot of our people were brought, you know, they, they took a lot of our people as slaves from Nigeria, from Yoruba land, took them to the Gold Coast in Ghana because they, there was gold, they yeah. built a castle there, and that's where the trade yeah. took place, and yeah. from there they shipped the people to all, all parts of the world. Yeah. So in our own record, we believe that about 50% of the entire population of Brazil are from our place. Yes. Wow. Yes. And wow. so, I like the Caribbeans, too. I've met Yoruba in Brazil. Yes. So, so, a lot. They study Yoruba in university. They practice the Yoruba tradition, the Yoruba religion. Everything is done there, right there. And you know, our religions predate the coming of Christ. 10,000 plus BC. We had already been, we had our own, we even had our own system of democracy. This modern day democracy is just a new thing. We had our own system that was there and everybody understood and worked for each other. Most important is that we are each other's brothers keepers. Mm -hmm. Your Highness, um, can you comment on the current political situation in Nigeria? Am, am I wrong in my understanding that the president has been out of the country for a while? and? Um, did you, could you comment on that? Okay. Uh, the, I, I don't want to weigh you out, but no, 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 I want I'm, to know. I'm fine. I'm fine. <laughs> I'm, I'm curious about the current political situation. Okay. Uh, the president was out for about two months, 
in the UK for medical leave, but he's back in the country. And the president is a former military leader who had been in government before. Oh, yes, he's an anti-corruption crusader, more like a civil rights activist. Yes. Unfortunately, he's uh, way above 70 and not in a particularly good health. Okay. But in terms of uh, having good policy, he has good plans for, for the country. Because the biggest problem we have in Africa is that of corruption. Yes. Yes. I read a book, How Europe underdeveloped oh, Africa. Yes. Oh, yes. But right now we're in a situation where we can say how Africans underdeveloped Africa themselves. Yes, ah. yes because yes. the biggest problem in any African country is that of corruption. Officials are still, I mean, two days ago, yes. they went into the apartment on one official and we discovered 43, 48 million US dollars <laughs> in, in cash. In his house. In, cash. <laughs> in his house. Works for the oil petroleum yes. corporation yes. in his yes. house. Yes. So that's the problem. You know, that's the problem of Africa, you yeah. know, so we hope that over time we will overcome this. And yeah. we keep, you know, we've been colonized once, but this is what we can refer to as neocolonialism. Yeah. You steal money from your people, yeah. you bring it to a Swiss yeah. bank, yeah. you die, your wife, your children don't even know the password, yeah. and the money remains there, and then they use it to develop. Yeah. Who do we blame wow. for that? That's our own fault. Yeah. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. 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 Ron. Please. Explain to us in your country uh, your 150,000 people under your rank. Do they pay taxes? And if they pay taxes, do they pay it to you? <laughs> <laughs> and, and the president, was, does everybody in Nigeria have to pay, like each different uh, group, have to pay taxes to the government? Okay, my size must have deceived you. Nobody pays me any tax. <laughs> yes. So we yes. Only have, sorry, uh, We only have only one question, please. Before we go. Okay. So nobody, nobody question. pays me any tax. But like every other country, everybody who is of uh, working age or is doing some business, earning some income, pays tax to the government. The Nigerian government operates the same system of presidential system that you operate in America. Mm -hmm. We have an elected executive president with a vice president. We have a Senate who are, who are just being overpaid doing nothing. We have the Congress, same way they are being overpaid doing nothing. We have 36 state governors, and then each of the governors also have their own respective commissioners and so on. And we have ministers, who you call secretary of this, secretary of state, secretary of that. So it's exactly the same system. But I am not in support of that system because it's a damn too expensive system. It's a very corrupt system. Doesn't really allow people to, you know, people people end up forcing, being forced to vote for the richest candidate who is able to buy airspace and campaign so much. Not necessarily the best. <laughs> so I'm not really personally in support of that system because it's just like a bloated system. And I think that's the same thing that you are enjoying. I wouldn't say suffer. I'm being diplomatic. I hope you understand. <laughs> in America. You know, if you, if you have all the money to buy up the media, you are making noise everywhere, you'll probably end up in the, in the White House. Just same way with Nigeria. Yes, same way, same, same way with Nigeria. But uh, what, what we try to do as kings is the fact that we recognize that these governments are powerful, they are there, but they won't be there forever. At best, the president could spend eight years. But as king, the king will reign forever. The king is closest to his people, and the welfare of our people is the most important thing to us. So we always strive to fight. We're always fighting with the government official, trying to bring new things to our own community. And the government is always, you know, politicians are liars everywhere. I don't know whether they lie in America. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry to say, I don't know if there are politicians here, but you are a politician. OK, all right. Most po OK, let me put it in the most politicians. Let me not say what politicians are. Most politicians are liars. It's difficult. You know, they make a promise, then they get, they get the position, then they forget you. One year to the election again, they come back, they tell you some stories, yes, they do that. But as a king, there's no way I'm running to. I, I'm sitting in the palace, my people are all around me, they keep coming from, it's a 24 hour duty. So I owe it to my people to ensure that their welfare is taken care of. So what I try to do is to balance up what the government is unable to do for my people. To seek for support, to improve the health care, to improve the empowerment for the women, to take care of the children, to ensure they are well developed, so that there is no vacuum. Because if I were to wait for the government, then it will create more problems for my people. All right. Lady, a question from a lady. Oh. Well, the king said. No. Yes, yes. I wonder how does it work with the king?
kings and a politician? Who has the most power? And how how do y'all share your power? Okay, the politicians <laughs> control the money, no doubt. <laughs> and whoever has the money has a lot of power. But but the power of the king is stronger because there's a lot more. You see, what we've never recognized is the power in people. You may have no dime in your pocket, but if you have the people. There's a saying in our place, if you want to know how strong you are as a general, look back and see how many people you have as your troop. Do you understand? So I look at him as the general, and I look at you as the troop. Somebody else may have a million naira and have just two people in this hall. So that's something we have failed to recognize. So I would say the king has more power. Also, the politician is only going to be there temporarily. Can't be there forever. But the king is permanently there with his people. And the king is somebody taken from amongst the people. Do you understand the difference? Politician just appears from somewhere, you know, <laughs> tells some, sorry, politician just appears, <laughs> just appears and then tells a story and then wins an election. But the king is one of your people. So you've been taken from the community. You can't really do anything wrong within the community because you are right in the community. Whatever you do for good or bad will be there for you in record. And it may deny your son or your children access to that kingdom because of what you have done wrong. You, you know, you understand. So I would say the king has a lot more power. And the king has a lot of spiritual powers. If I were to call people and I say, look, I'm praying for you, I'm yes. definitely that that is going to come to pass. Yes. You understand what I'm saying? But, you know, for politics, it's all about money. <laughs> <laughs> Let us give the king a warm round of applause. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank, you. Thank 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 you. Does the king mind taking a picture with a politician? I don't mind. <laughs> it's for your own good, so I don't mind. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm Yoruba. No, no, no. I don't have French accent at all. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. Okay. The politician wants to take the king. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> this is Council President oh. John oh. Williams. This the is Queen. State the Senator. Queen. The Queen. Oh, the Queen. Oh, Queen. Oh, Queen. State oh. Senator Leslie. Okay. okay. He's a candidate for governor. Okay. No, I'm a candidate for king now. Uh, <laughs> 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 right, later for governor, right? Be the king. Thank you. Uh, okay. King, thank you so thank much. You thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're the first king whose hand I've ever shaken. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Well, with God, we bless you. Okay. <laughs>